Yes, lads, welcome back to episode 8 of the Real Madrid career mode. We're just over the halfway point of the season now. And we're sort of just getting to where we need to be. Sorry, I'm a bit straight about it. It's not a good start, is it? But yeah, we're just getting where we need to be now. And uh, we finished off the transfer window as well as we can. Jesus, I've got some rate wind. Sorry. Very unprofessional. But yeah, we've got a... Uh, a lot to be going for us. We're obviously top of the league. We're into the round of 16 of the UCL. And we're also in the round two of the Copa del Rey after winning the Super Copa. So it's very nice so far as start to the seasons go. We'll start with the press conference. I just can't believe it. I really can't. I'm just reading it and it's... Are you out of the title race? We're literally top of the league. This game is so bad. It's so stupid. You get the most stupid questions as possible. But, you know, it is what it is. We're going to ignore it. We're going to push on with the Athletic Bill Bow game. Hope we can get a uh, good point there. And, obviously, we beat Athletic Club last game as well. We beat him in the uh, in the Super Cup of Espana final in Saudi Arabia. I think it was, anyway. I don't know. It's it's a Saudi Arabia or Dubai. I've been over this multiple times. I think it's one of the two. I can't remember which one. I still haven't looked into it because I'm not that bothered. It's like a Mickey Mouse trophy. But hopefully we can uh, we can improve on that in uh, win the league in the Champions League as well. So we'll have a look at the game settings before we kick off. Heavily, heavily scrutinised so far. Apparently it looks too easy. Guys, I penultimate. I promise I penultimate. I wouldn't change it. Like I, I, I just win games ultimate because I've played career mode all year. We are going to change them nonetheless, make it a bit harder for us and, um, I don't know, more enjoyable for you guys. We'll make the CPU faster. Um, I'm not doing anything else because they're already stupid with shooting anyway. We'll make ourselves a little bit slower. Not a lot slower, but, you know, noticeably slower. And then we'll increase the injury... Well, not severity. No, I'm not doing that. The injury frequency. We'll uh, lower the pass speed and um, hopefully... We'll, um, we'll get more going for us in terms of things like that. So we'll move on into the first game of the episode. Um, we have got Athletic Athletic Bilbao, or Athletic Club, the uh, the Basque team at the Estadio San Mames. And we will see our team before we kick off. So Courtois starts in goal. We've got a back four in the 4-3-3 of Angelino, Militao, Rudiger and Carvajal. The midfield three is Cruz, Tuchemeni and Modric. And the forward line of Vinny Jr., Benzema and Serge Gnabry. So uh, we're going to see the team taking the picture before the game. Um, beautiful bunch of lads, let's be honest. They're all, they're all on Love Island in real life, aren't they? Apart from Cotto. Look at the size of that nose. Great player, though. Great goalkeeper in real life. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Shouldn't make jokes like that. It's not very nice. But in the first minute, Atletico will get a chance. Sorry, Atletico will get a chance. Angelino wins the ball very, very well. Cruz has got the ball now, looking for the forward pass. We're looking through towards Vinny Jr., who gets past his man. That's a woeful challenge by De Marcos, who sent off inside the first two minutes of the game. Oscar De Marcos. What an idiot. What an idiot. But in the 13th minute now, Benzema's got a chance, looking for the run of Vinicius Jr., who makes a brilliant steaming run. Gets past his man, Nunez. Gets past Vivian, what a name. The the, the mum of, how, of uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Modric has got it now. Gnabry's got a chance. And it's a great goal. Put us 1 0 up already. Serge Gnabry with the uh, Lewandowski celebration. Lewandowski, it's Robert Lewandowski celebration. And it's a wonderful goal. 1 0 ahead already. And um, good little bit of play by Modric. So uh, we are 1 0 up already, as I previously stated. And we'll get another chance. In the 30th minute, Bilbao win the ball back. They're playing it through the lines already. Venesiador plays out, right, out wide towards Bariga, the former Torino winger. Back towards Venesiador, in towards Sanchez. Back towards Castro Montes, who makes it 1-1. It's a brilliant goal. I say we'll get another chance. The game will get a chance to uh, to score against us, and it's 1-1. In the 30th minute, we get another chance. Gnabry's got it again. Comes inside towards Benzema. Back towards Vinicius Jr. What a wonderful save by Unai Simon. I thought we had a penalty at one point, but Bacice just uh, broke the legs of our uh, of our winger outside of the box, so it's all good. But 1-1 at half-time. Castro Montes in the 32nd minute got a goal back for them, and it's just it's just unlucky. It really is, but uh, we'll, we'll restart in the second half. We'll see what we can do and improve on the poor showing so far. So uh, we do get a chance. 
Jovic is on now, plays a through ball towards Vinicius Jr. Hex can't, can't keep up, he's going to hit across the keeper, Simon. And we're 2 1 up. Brilliant goal by Vinicius Jr. Jovic is offering a lot more than Benzema is at the moment. I'm actually sort of pondering is he the future replacement of Benzema because he's a really good player. I like him in real life, he's a great finisher. And um, lovely pass through to Vinicius Jr. to put two on ahead. In the 74th minute, we get another chance. Asensio's got the ball. Just come on now. Cuts inside on the two-star week for Marco Asensio. Whatever his name is, Marcus Marco Asensio. Makes it 3-1. The Harry Potter spell himself, Asensio, with a brilliant goal. The keeper with no chance. What is their defence doing, though? They don't stand up a man. They just, like, they go one way. That looked like a nice Simon to be fair. I don't even know that keeper is. It doesn't look like him anyway. But... Brilliant goal by Asensio nonetheless, and we are indeed 3-1 ahead. In the final two minutes of the game, they'll get a goal back, Bilbao. Vanessa Dorf finds Villalba. We can't close him down because we can't change players. And he gets a consolation in the final minute of the game. There's no chance that they're going to score again. I'm going to going to spoil it for you. But yeah, very, very well played. Very difficult game. It's a decent side on this new difficulty curve we've got. As uh, Asensio tries to cut through the lines, look at this! Look at the space we had. Then he turned so slowly, he turned like a bloody double-decker bus. But you know, it, it is what it is. We still won the game, and uh, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. It's so difficult on these new settings, though. We do win four-two. Sorry, three-two. And um, I mean, it's not exactly like the best win in the world, but I still think we deserved it. Do you know what I'm saying? Very, very difficult game. Three points spent to goals to 4.5. The team was good. It really was. The team was good in general. Courtois, uh, I'm not sure. Unai Simon is the goalkeeper. He was all right for them. The defence, I'm not too sure. I think I might need a new central defender, to be honest. We're conceding far too many goals, as people are pointing out in the comments. I don't know what's happened. We've gone to pot in terms of clean sheets. We haven't kept one for, like, seven match days. It's a bit ridiculous, to be honest with you. But, yeah, we still... Uh, we still get the required victory to uh, push us further ahead in the league now, even though the press keep asking us if we're out of the title race because they're just stupid. They really are. They really, really are. And um, now we've got a game against Elche. But before we do that, before we move any further, we are going to sign a player who's been requested in the comment section. I signed him on the, on the Benfica rebuild, which I actually forgot about. And he is heavily linked with Real Madrid in real life. Gabriel Slonina, 66-rated goalkeeper, 17 years old. Looks like a future starter. But we'll play his release close. It's worth about 1.7 million. We'll pay the 3.3 that they're asking for. And I think this could be a really good signing, to be fair, in terms of, like, the future of the career mode. So uh, we, we're planning on doing two to three seasons, probably three at a very max push, maybe two. And this guy could be a good backup keeper if we uh, sell Lunin in the next year or so so yeah we're going to agree terms in prospect five-year contract length no release clause even though they wanted one 10k week two hundred thousand pounds signing on fee and that looks like a pretty handy deal if i'm being honest with myself yeah very happy with that i'm not sure about the negotiation music in the background it's very weird it sounds a bit like an adult film i think it's very strange but um yeah excellent signing nonetheless and we'll move into the simulation that we're going to do against Elche in La Liga. So we're going to change the team very quickly before we start. We've got, I mean, everyone's match fit, but I don't want to push it that they're at the point where they're going to be shattered. Lunin's going to get the start in this one because we've got a cup game coming up in the third game. And Slonina will get his first start in that. Jovic will start as a central striker instead of Kareem the Dream, who's uh, really good on simulations, to be fair. Valverde can come in and so can Camavinga. Keep Casemiro in. Pretty much a strong team, I'd say. We'll simulate the game. We're at home. We should win. Well, we should win, shouldn't we? Let's see what happens as we simulate the game. And it's a 2-1 victory. Very, very nice indeed. I mean, they literally score every time you simulate the game. Two shots, two chances. They managed to score. And we had seven shots, five chances. We only scored two. It is what it is. B.A. Yeah, Miller scored for Elche first. Then Casemiro in the 61st and Rodrigo in the 84th. Got his goals back. Casemiro is brilliant, by the way. Such an underrated baller in real life. The man of the match was Rodrigo, though. And um, the 8.7 was a very good showing by our young Brazilian winger. So, very, very happy with that result. 2-1 victory again in the league. We're still even further ahead now. And we'll move on 
into the, I can't wait for this game, the third game of the episode. We're away from home. I don't even know who we've got. I really don't. It's a Spanish second tier team. And um, it'll be very interesting to say the least. It's, I think it's like Town Lane, this stadium as well. They've even got like a Spanish stadium to chuck them in. It's just Town Lane. Yeah, Court Lane, Burgos CF. Oh God, we're against Burgers. Right, so we'll see the teams before we kick off. I can't even I can't even name that midfielder who's the captain. Uni de Barena. We've got a player called Andy. That's an easy one to remember. Berhon and Malbasic, Munoz, Navarro, Garcia, Sierra, Rodriguez and Caro. That means to be fair, it's not that they're very Spanish. Very Spanish apart from Andy. What a what a flipping name Andy is. Nice. But I digress. We've got the cinematic filter on so we don't get copyrighted on anything. Slaney starts in goal for us. A back four of Carvajal, Militao, Lukeba and Angelino. Midfield three of Modric, Casemiro and Tuchimeni. Then the forward line of the recently returned Takifuso Kubo off his loan spell. Benzema as the captain and Rodrigo as the winger. So a very interesting team. There's, the filter's off, by the way, now, guys. I, li I literally just I hate being copyrighted because it sometimes removes it from certain countries. And I, I don't get like a massive depth from different countries, but I get a few people watch me. And I just I, I don't want to take away the content from them because they might be enjoying it, they might not, but they might be watching it because they feel sorry for me. But you know what I mean. And um, we will start with the first highlight of this game. So Burgos FC have got nothing to play for, really. It should be a walkover, to be perfectly honest. Andy's got the ball. Andy, very early on, finds Malbasic, still on goal in the first minute of the game. And Slonina with a wonderful save. That was excellent goalkeeping, to be honest, by the big American goalkeeper. Excellent save by Slonina, as we are still ahead. So, uh, 11 minutes in now. The player whose name I can't pronounce plays the ball back out towards Andy. bergeon has got it now, back towards Malbasic again, and they're 1-0 up. Malbasic has scored a goal for Burgos CF. It's not even against the runner play. It's very well deserved. And we're already losing. And this is a very worrying side. So 27 minutes in now. Takifuso Kubo comes through. Sierra can't keep up. Kubo with the first chance for us in the game. Takifuso Kubo makes it 1-0. Sorry, 1-0. one all in the game. It's his first goal for the club. It just says take on his back. I think it's meant to say tacky. But it just looks like it says take. Take 18. Very, very strange how he can't put accents on names. But yeah, 1-1. One, one. Another chance for Burgos now. Berhon outpaces Militao like he's not even there. He's dig the keeper, Slonina. And Burgos, CF. Oh, two one ahead. What the hell is happening? What are we meant to do with this? Oh, God, it's 2-1 to Burgos. We get another chance ourselves in the 42nd. Kubo wins the ball back very well. Benzema's got it now. Chance on goal against the goalkeeper. And he makes it 2-0. We're still in the game. That's all that matters. We can't lose this game to a second division side who are, like, 15th in the table. This will be super embarrassing. It really will. And, um, I mean, it's a good little play by Taki as well. again. Taki Fuso, Kubo, brilliant little bit of play from him and Benzema with the all-important goal. But just before half-time, Burgos CF get another chance. Burhan wins the ball back. Andy's got it now. He hits one on the volley. Oh, my God. What the hell is going on? What the hell's going on here? I mean, I'm losing. Going into the second half break. Sorry, the first half break. Against Burgos CF of the Segunda Division. And bleeding Andy scored against me. I don't even know what to say. I'm mad, but I'm also, like, shocked at the same time. It's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. But, yeah, we, we, we're not doing great this half. We need to pick our ideas up and pluck up a bit. So, um, very poor first half. We will restart in the second half, though. Uh, they come down the line with Rodriguez, who's looking for a whip back stick towards Berhon. He finds the ball. It's a first-time volley by Berhon. It's tipped into his own net by Slonina. Oh, my God. I can't even blame him for that. It's just a great finish. I'm not even joking. I haven't showed other highlights, but Slanina's made some excellent saves this game. One-on-ones and everything. But that, that's just like Van Bastian, that. Oh, my God. Please don't say we've lost. And we have 4-2. It's the shock of the century. As if we're out of the cup already. We are, though, and it's just too hard to take. 
That is really, really poor. Really, really poor from me in that game. But the settings, oh my days. We've set these settings up. And we can't keep up with anyone. Like, lecaba has got 77 pace and you're getting outpaced by like 60 pace strikers. It's just not easy. Like, we had better chances as well. We had a better game. Lecaba was woeful, by the way. Really, really poor show by him. Slanina, I can't blame him. To be honest, Cairo made more saves than two. Get over yourselves, game. That man, Berhon. Brilliant game by him. Andy with, with a worldie as well. Benzema. I'm disappointed in him. He got one goal and one assist, which doesn't look bad on paper, but it was. It's a lot worse than it seems. Kubo got that and played half the game. God, this press conference is going to be absolutely horrendous. I'd be getting hammered in the media in real life if this actually happened. So we'll see what sort of questions they will ask us. That was more than just a defeat. You could have done better. Yeah, it was a terrible defeat. I don't even know what to say. Oh, God, there's no option to say my team played woeful and I tactically got it wrong. Burgos Chef were a better team today, weren't they? And that last goal sealed it. Yep. Yes, it did. We paid for not giving ourselves something to hang on to. Very, very true because we were at fault for everything which went against us this game. We were never in the lead. We were always chasing the game and it was just bad. We were really bad. We didn't create anything in the second half, really, of any note. And uh, Burham was the best player on the pitch. I'm looking at siding him. No, I'm not. I'm not. We don't need him, but... Woeful, woeful from me. And uh, I take full responsibility. And hopefully we can get something back in the final game of the episode. So very, very poor in that one. And we will move on to the aforementioned one I've just mentioned. And this time we have Real Valladolid. And I think we're at the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu. So we, we're, going, we're going back to basics now. Back to basics after that woeful result against Burgos CF. And we need a victory. We really, really do. Because that was poor. That was such a such a poor showing against the Segunda Division side. Yeah, we are at the Estadio Santiago Bernabeu against Real Valladolid CF. We see the team with a filter. Courtois starts in goal 4-3-3 as expected. Mendy, Alaba, Rudiger and James as the back four. Strongest back four we've got. Midfield three of Cruz, Casemiro and Modric. Back to the legendary midfield. Then the forward line of Vinny Jr., Benzema and Serge Gnabry. So uh, first half of the game comes inside the sixth minute. Modric has got the ball. Casemiro plays it inside towards Tony Cruz. Wonderful pass by Casemiro. And we're 1-0 ahead against our rivals. Real Valley or did. I think they're our rivals anyway because they say Real before their name. And I feel like that's a rivalry just in itself. But great play all round. Brilliant goal by, by Cruz to put us 1-0 ahead with the Ronaldo celebration. The 16th minute, though, Nacho coming down the line. Plays it back to Aguardado. Back in towards Aguardado. Weissman with a first-time shot. And how has he been beaten from there? Courtois, you absolute nugget. Save a shot, please. I'm begging you. Man, this keeper's stressing me out. 1-1 now. Then we'll get a chance ourselves in the 36th minute. Vinicius Jr. shrugs off Anuar. Chance on goal against the goalkeeper. Across the keeper. He's hit it wide. It's a ways from Vinicius Jr. Massive waste, but just before halftime, Valladolid will get another chance. Monchu with a pass towards Weissman again. And the Israeli striker makes it 2-1. Oh, God. We're losing again to a team who were just far, far superior than. And it's woeful. It really is. We can't keep a clean sheet. In the new, in the new window in the summer, we're going to sign a new centre-back, I think. We need one. I'd love a VVD in the club, to be honest. As uh, we're going to the first half, you'll see the whistle go in a minute. We don't get another chance. It doesn't give us the, the chance on the break. And it is a woeful, woeful first half showing from Real Madrid. And we've got a lot of work to do to uh, recover this game. The Madridistas in the crowd are not happy about this. They're really not. So uh, we'll restart in the second half now with a chance straight after kickoff, basically. Modric wins the header. Jovic has got the ball now. On for Benzema again. Back towards Vinicius Jr., who turns his man very well. Plays in towards Gnabry with another chance on goal. And Serge Gnabry makes it 2 all, And it's a wonderful finish by our German hitman. So uh, another chance as well in the 58th. Vinicius Hughes played through. Gets past Fresneda, the former hero in the career mode rebuild we did with uh, Celta Vigo. And he makes it 3-2. Doesn't want to celebrate though, bless him. He's a kind guy. And we're 3-2 ahead. Now I've turned it around quickly. And then it gets even better in the 72nd. Gnabry's got another chance now. Low driven shot in the bottom corner against Roberto. And we're 4-2 up. The game's dead and buried now. 
for about 30 seconds we were behind all it seems anyway and we've really really recovered this game with a uh, double now for Gnabry and a double for assists for Luka Modric so excellent so far and then it gets even better we make it five on this next attack look at Gnabry here wiggles his way past Monchu gets past the defender the defender Joaquin threw on goal again brilliant play across the keeper Roberto and we're 5-2 ahead, and Gnabry has bagged himself a hat-trick. He's been such a good sign, and he really, really has. I didn't know if he'd work for us, but he has. And then we're going to make it 6 in the 83rd. It's headed away, back towards Alaba, who wins the header, back out towards Jovic on the edge of the box. He's bent it round the keeper, Roberto, and it's 6-2. It's gone from a first-half deficit to a second-half demolition. Brilliant, brilliant goal by Luka Jovic on the week foot. That's why he's got five-star week foot. I'm going to see the replay of this one. It's a wonderful goal. Good thinking by uh, the winger. I think we're going to have Look at the finish. The uh, astuteness to put it in the top bins as well. Brilliant goal by Luka Jovic. And we are 6-2 ahead. One more chance now. Jovic finds Gnabry in the 88th minute. Nacho can't keep up. Roberto's not going to save it again. Doesn't even move, and it's now 7-2. It's now become a hammering, almost a humbling. Now it's a hammering. Sergio Gnabry with his fourth goal of the game to seal an excellent result and an excellent victory for the Real Madrid faithful. So a uh, brilliant episode in the end. Obviously a terrible result against Burgos in the cup, but we've won all three league games, and um, we're further ahead of Atletico de Madrid in the La Liga table. So uh, look at the stats. It was domination through and through in that second half. We really deserved it. Gnabry was wonderful. I mean, to be fair, Courtois got an assist. Roberto was woeful. He took the Courtois role up this game very, very well. And uh, Weissman, to be fair, Weissman was very, very good for these. I, I really appreciated how good he was for his team. But Jovic came on, changed the game in an instant. He was starting a few more games over Benzema now, I believe. And an excellent result to keep us back on track. And um, after a woeful, woeful result, the loss of the century, the biggest shock of the century against Burgos CF, the actual Burgers, we've uh, we've done excellent to recover from that and absolutely dominate Real Valladolid. So we'll look at the table before we finish up. Uh, we are now 14 points ahead of Atletico de Madrid. We're 20 above Betis, 21 above Hetafe, and 22 against up against Barcelona. We've only lost one game all season, scored the most goals, conceded the second least, and we have the highest goal difference by an absolute country mile. So uh, excellent in the Liga. We've already won the league as far as I'm concerned. 100 points is what I'm after, and we'll have a look at the top scorers as well. So Vinicius Junior is the top scorer still with 22. Benzema did not score that episode at all. He's still second along with Correa and uh, Gnabry's now got 14, so he's joined third. Uh, Benzema's still the top assist, though. It looked like he'll stay there, to be honest. Vinicius scores more than he assists, with Modric now on eight from less games played. And then Courtois still remains top of the clean sheets, but not for long, as far as I'm concerned, because he's not been great, and I'm sure someone will lap him eventually. So, great episode for us today, guys. I really appreciate you watching. We're going to have a look at the calendar into the next episode. So we start with an away game against Villarreal um, at their stadium, I don't know what it's called. A home game against Girona. An away game at the Signal Iduna Park against Dortmund. An away game against Real Vallecano. And uh, we'll finish up with a final game of that episode against Real Sociedad. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time to the Real Madrid career mode very, very soon.